All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Resh Mahabur coming back to you from Wayne State University. Um, we are going to talk about one of the shortest sections and probably shortest video that I will ever have ever. Um, it is probably the most largest topic um, to lead into uh, calculus for a pre-calculus course. So it's not important, but extremely important. <laughs> it's kind of weird. All right. Um, maybe it's not that it's not important. It's just extremely simple. And it's something called the average rate of change. Okay. Uh, most places or most places I've seen have called it ARC or AROC, um, just for an abbreviation. Um, I'll be honest with you. The average rate of change is the easiest thing in the world to calculate. So I'm going to draw you a picture. Pictures, uh, well, my mentor always tells me that a picture um, is good for a thousand words. So let me draw you a picture. And this is all average rate of change says. If you have a graph as freaky or as not freaky as you want, um, all an average rate of change does is takes two random points. We'll call them A and B. Okay, that corresponds to here and here on the graph. And this is what the average rate, range, uh, average rate of change tells you. This. Okay, it looks at this line, which is basically a quote unquote secant line. I'm just throwing a lot of terminology at you, but it's just a line, right? And it talks about, it gives you its slope, okay, over these two points, okay? And I don't know if you remember what slope is, but average rate of change, so over the interval, so over the interval A to B, if you're okay with interval notation, okay, the average rate of change is slope, right? Which is just going to be what? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, we're no longer in algebra with trig or um, what are these other courses before cal pre-calculus comes. So we don't say y anymore. We just call them f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. Well, why f of x2? Because that's the output you get. One. So basically, this figure and this figure are the same, right? So, but the, the point is that we have no x, x1s and x2s here. They're called a and b here. So this is just f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That's it. That's all you got to do in order to calculate the slope. Now, I have no values on here, but I guarantee you this is what we call average rate of change. So when I say calculate the average rate of change, you notice, and the reason why we don't really call it slope anymore is because slope normally pertains to straight lines. The average rate of change just tells you whether or not what's the rate that something is changing, hence the word rate of change. So over this period, it says this is about how much you grow. This is about how much you grow, okay? This is all you have to calculate. So let me give you some real values to this. Let's call this, and most of the time we use time, so call this this axis the time axis. And let's say we're counting this, the unit on time is, I don't know, uh, the unit on time is in uh, minutes, right? And I say, let's find the average rate of change from six minutes to 10 minutes. And at six minutes, uh, we'll call the Y here, uh, it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call this, uh, ah, pounds, so like pressure, like if you were like weighing something, right? Or force, force is good. Nah, pounds is all right, pounds. So this is eight pounds at six minutes. And at 10 minutes, it tells you that it is 25 pounds. Well, what does that come down to this rate is then? Well, that would mean that this is just gonna be the change in the Y's, change in the Y's over the change in the X's. Now, here's something you must keep track of though. This is a rate, so it's gonna be some kind of unit per unit kind of a thing. On your numerator, the units here are in pounds. Then on your denominator, the units here are in minutes. So that means after you simplify this guy down, this is the math that is 15 minus eight, I believe is 17. And this gives you 10 minus four, uh, six is four, which that goes into it four and one quarter times, right? But four and one quarter what? It's about the interpretation. My, my advisor from, uh, my PhD advisor always says the beauty is in the interpretation, right? The beauty. So what is the units on this? What does this even mean? Well, that's the whole point of this. That means that this value is pounds per minute. 
Okay, so think about this. If this is a word problem, they and somebody did some something to actually get you a function, they say that okay, it's changing four and one fourth pounds per minute. That's a lot. That means every minute you're gaining four and one fourth pounds, right? Or four and one fourth somethings, right? It doesn't have to be pounds per minute. It can be you no know, something per somethings, right? But that's all the all in the interpretation of the problem. But this is all average rate of change is. It's just slope, but this is not exactly a straight line. It's the 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 growth from one point to another. Okay, that's why they call it average rate of change and not just slope. You know? So it, it is a very, very, very simplistic details. And this is how we're actually going to get um, we're gonna get to talk about something called the derivative later on. Alright, so let me give you something that's a little cutesy. A little cutesy. So let me say this. How about this? Let me say, uh, let me give you a classic word problem, okay? Because I've been doing this whole weight loss thing, and it's cool. The program I use has this regression function. It's uh, and so it basically does, does something like this: the weight loss function function w of t is given by the following okay and then normally they say what the unit is so maybe I should go back and say the weight loss function W of T in pounds right LBs okay um, is given by the following and then the function actually is this f of X I know it's a really weird one the square root of 7 minus Oh shoot, not seven. What did that thing say? X squared plus seven plus fifteen x. Okay? So this is kind of it regressed over time. Okay? So here's your job. Find the average rate of change from T equals three days to t equals um oh how about this one day to three days how about that uh how about zero to three i'm just trying to make the numbers so they're nice but it's it's really specific on how it does things so three days to uh zero days to three days Okay, that's your job. So here's the work. Okay, so here we go. So first things first, to find the average rate of change, I need to do well. What is a and what is b? Well, the interval is going from zero to three. So uh, this is my a and that is my b. Pretty simple, right? So I need to do f of b minus f of a. Well, not f because the function's in w's. Sorry, I get over anxious with my uh, my functions. That means all my x's need to be t's as well. Sorry, guys. Now, still learning how to use stuff and still learning how to think on the fly. So this is end up going to be coming w of three minus w of zero over uh, three minus zero. Now here's something that's cool. The the numerator of this, and this is just a cool little tidbit because I know the homeworks we we get are sometimes uh, with the online homework is weird. This actually has a special name. The difference in the top and the bottom. This is actually just called the net change. We're no, we're normally not very interested in the net change unless you're doing finance, but it's okay. That's the that's called the net change. It's a difference, just the difference in the y's. All right, so now you got to figure out what w of three is. And once again, if you don't know how to evaluate functions, you need to go back and watch my video. I think it's called uh, uh, it's just a normal function video. It's the basics. Just go watch that, and it teaches you everything you need. All right. So w of three, well, that's going to be. Let's go to the side. W of three, and once again. Partitioning your thoughts is big, so that's why I'm going to go to the side and do this. This is the square root of 3 squared plus 7 plus 15 times 3. What does this give me? The square root of is, what's 9 plus 7 is 16 and 45. This is 4 plus 49. Okay, so that's 53. So right now at that time, it's 53 minus w of zero well you got to plug some stuff in and yes the real world is not perfect by any means so what does this mean this is zero boom right 
but this is going to be square root of 7. Now, people are going to say, oh, if this is in pounds, how the hell can you be square root of 7? Well, guess what, guys? It's a real number, meaning that you could weigh that. No, but we don't have the measurement tools to uh, be, we really don't care if it gets a half a pound off, right? Uh, this is why significant figures in, in uh, real, real or physical sciences are really what we chase after, because after a certain point, it really is irrelevant. We have no way of measuring it, or um, measuring it becomes more tedious. But the idea is, is that when you plug in 0, it's square root of 7. And this is 3 minus 0, which is just going to be 15, 53 minus square root of 7 over 3. Now, people say, well, once again, you must give me units here. The numerator is in LBs. The denominator is in days. So this is technically my answer. It's very, very hideous. It's 53 root 7 over 3 pounds per day now people are like well why do we why would you ever ha have an answer like this no most of the time you don't people do a lot of rounding okay so this is just a point that you m must be able to approximate numbers so what is square root of seven approximately well square root of seven is in between square root of four and square root of nine so four is two nine is three so it's two point something all right two point some change. It's called 5. So this is approximately 53 minus 2.5 over 3, which gives you, what is that, 50.5 over 3 pounds per day. Um, I know these aren't exact numbers, but this is how you would do. So even if the, the root 7 was like a whole number, it would be very, very clean. But it's not always clean, guys. Bottom line is, this is the concept. But if this freaks you out, it's because you're not comfortable doing arithmetic. So don't get too freaked out by it. All right, not a very very bad problem. Um, obviously, there's more work that could be done on that fraction, but I don't see the point of wasting video time to do arithmetic. All right, here we go. So here's a very 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 good problem. Uh, a weight trainer. And this is one that we'll talk about in class tomorrow. So when we get to class, I'll collect this from you guys or do it now to see if you guys have the right concepts. And then I'll, we'll cut the video. A weight trainer gains muscle. Muscle. I seem to have a whole bunch of stuff uh, in uh, kilograms, right? So let's say it's Canadian because Canadians, uh, are, they work off the uh, metric system. In uh, gains muscle in kilograms, according according to the following function, following function, and we'll say since it's muscles, we'll make it the m function. Function m of t equals uh, one over sixteen t cubed plus uh, t plus 1 over plus the square root of t minus 1 okay where t is measured in days days not gas why did it say gas days days okay find the average rate of change from day uh, something cute day 17 to day how about day one to day 17 Okay, this is more realistic, I would think. Actually, let's make this not cube, but make it uh, squared, and then we'll take away some stuff. That looks more realistic. All right, guys. So, moral of the story is this is not a very hard concept, um, but the conceptual understanding of the units is very, very important. So, like in this problem, the units will probably be kilograms per day. Um, if you focus on just the units, right? The numerator, if your average rate of change, the, numerator, the, the change in the, the net change will be in kilograms and the denominator will be in days. So you should have kilograms per day as your units, which is very, 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 very important. 
All right, guys. So once again, uh, we keep growing, um, but keep yourself uncomfortable. Keep pushing. Build your confidence. Um, talk to each other. And once again, to go somewhere you've never been, you're going to have to do some things you've never done. So I will catch you guys on the next video. And uh, if you've got any questions, send me emails. I'll, uh, I look forward to, to seeing you guys. All right. Adios, Falcon Dios.